Hey everybody, Jessica, Pretty Prints and Paper, back with a note-taking bullet journal video. In case you didn't know, I work at a university where I'm a teacher and there's so many things that I want to learn about and infuse into the curriculum, which includes a lot of reading. So there's a lot of things on my to read list and I needed a place to log it. And I could do it on, you know, a database system. I could do it in my bullet journal, but I needed a separate place so that I didn't have to keep trying to look for these notes. So this is what I'm going to be using this notebook for. If you are new to the channel, I talk about the bullet Bullet journal system, creative planning, alcohol ink, and brush calligraphy, all so that you can come up with a system that is unique, yours, and useful. So today I'm going to be talking about how I'm setting this up as my kind of anti-racism learning notebook. This was from the Archer and Olive Mystery Sale, so this is a way bigger size than they normally have. I think this is what is an A4, and way bigger than an A5. So this is why I'm setting this up in here so that each page could contain more notes. Inside I am doing what Ryder Carroll from the bulletjournal.com talks about as dedicated indexes. I don't normally use an index, but I wanted to sort of keep track about the categories of the stuff I was reading. So I have a regular index for just in general learning, and then I have uh, an index for social justice related reading, and then I also have stuff that's maybe just related strictly to teaching and then reading that I might do specifically to infuse into the course that I teach. I am sort of hoping that this will be enough room for any of the notes that I would be able to fit into this entire notebook, and splitting it down the middle allows you to double the space that you have for pages. And just in case, I left a whole entire spread for a buffer to see if I had anything else that I wanted to put in here. And then here I have a resource list. This is where I've been translating some of the readings and recommendations that other people have been giving me. So I'll type in or I'll write in the type of resource that it is, who recommended it to me, what it is, and then eventually what page number that I will take notes about it inside this notebook because I'm going to number the pages at the bottom. So for example, one of the first things that I put in here was my notes about letters from a Birmingham jail, which is written by Martin Luther King Jr. This was how I kind of kicked off MLK Day. We had a day off from work, but I wanted to read more about this really historic piece. And what I do is what I would call a cross between sketch notes and just visual note taking. Of course, it's just a lot of lettering. So I'm going to walk through what I'm thinking when I set up a page like this, because I do take notes as I go. I don't like do a draft and then I go back and make it pretty, but I do take notes as I go along. So the first thing that I'll do is kind of set up a title across the top. My favorite brush pen to, to use for something like this is the Tombow Fudenosuke, and this is the hard tip because the hard tip can actually write smaller and more delicately because of the firmness of that tip, so that's why I use that. And I go through and I just pull out quotes or ideas that really strike me, and I try to frame them in different ways. So on this one, I started here and took just a note, and I try to visualize using shapes and spatial placement to explain relationship between different things. So for example, uh, MLK was part of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference that was in partnership with the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights. So I try to signal that this was an arrow back and forth to show a partnership between the two. And I use some markers to kind of highlight different um, points along the way. My favorite markers to use. I have two different sets. One is the Passion Marker from the Passion Planner. I just love how light their colors are. There's a fine liner at the one end and then a broad chisel tip on the other end. They go really well together and I use them all the time. So using the highlighters in different ways throughout is kind of a theme here and it kind of creates a look that makes it look a lot nicer than it actually is. Uh, I'm pulling out quotes here, like the short ones, I'll highlight the part of the quote that really stands out. I will do different kinds of bullets for lists, and um, again with arrows and shapes you can really 
illustrate a lot of different connections that ideas have with one another. And by changing the style in which I write, I can draw attention to, oh, this is a different idea, this is a different idea, and it looks contained within itself. Um, for something like this at the bottom, when there is a clear list, Nonviolent campaigns consist of these four different qualities and knowing that this quote was a definition that went along with these four things, I used the same color to create a unity amongst these two parts so that you can see that they go together. I did all the writing down here this way and then I went over onto this side and again using these arrows, using the different brush pens and my favorite pen right now is a 0.28 gel pen. It's tiny, but I love using it because my handwriting is honestly so loopy and sloppy that the additional friction of the, uh, such a tiny, tiny tip makes it so that you can read all these loops and it's more legible and forces me to slow down just a little bit because of the friction. And so I fit this all on these two pages here. I have gotten a lot better over the years as a calligrapher to look ahead to see how much space something might take. That's a practice thing. So some of you might want to use a pencil and just jot it down, but I kind of go straight in with a pen because I, one, don't really care if I mess it up a little bit. And then I also can look ahead and anticipate how much space something might take. And that just comes with time. The next thing that I took notes on was a class called Government for Grownups with uh, Sharon McMahon from Sh uh, Sharon Says So on Instagram. I wanted to learn more about the realities of how our government is supposed to be set up, and that is through you know Congress and the Capitol and the con uh, Articles of Confederation and the Constitution. I, in this case, could sketch a little bit more, and I did take these notes as I went. I knew what the title of the class was, so I drew that right up at the top, and I decided to use the Sharpie S Note highlighters for this. They were just honestly the first things that I could grab, and I love, again, the rainbow colors, and I used that going backwards. So I like to use maybe purple goes to blue goes to green, or I'll start at pink and go down the line, but that kind of creates a flow in a visual way through color. You can see that here's that purple part. I dated it. I wrote down who was doing the class and I started over here. Uh, she had uh, an image of the Capitol building, so I sketched that because it really represents the core of what we're talking about. I used this scroll sketch because we're talking about the Constitution and frankly it reminds me of an old scroll of paper that they were reading off in Hamilton, so I sketched that out to highlight this one particular piece of information. And then what happens sometimes when I'm in this big size of a notebook is that two kind of columns show up or sections show up. So I try to follow that structure that I create for myself by noting that, okay, the capital creates one column. So this is going to fill out the rest of the column and even out that space and then move on to different sections. I got really lucky that these all kind of fit here, but using color to say this is one list, this is another list, they're talking about two different things, and again, it's because I've been doing calligraphy for a very long time that I can do this as she talks. And over here, it was a timeline. I love being able to use a dot grid notebook for taking notes because honestly, the dots allow me some flexibility and structure to do straight lines or go outside. Doing a timeline this way was really easy then to build in um, the sections and use color to say, this is a big chunk that you can focus on separately. And honestly, if you even zoom in here on these pages, my handwriting is not that great. So it's all organized kind of nicely. It's because I can letter a little bit that it even looks really all that interesting. It's honestly because I organized it in a more spatial way. And down here is a whole other thing. You can do so much with doing little bullet points differently and it just looks really nice. And then on this side, I have the rest of the 
government for grown-ups class and you can see that I can just continued on that color scheme I did a little bit of sketching with like people outlines and using arrows to show okay all the things that flow from the congressperson the arrow there's an idea with the light bulb it goes to staff which then goes to a lot of lawyers and then these two government uh, bodies funnel information back into the congressperson, which again, you can use arrows to show that. Processes you can show with a list one, two, three, four, and just different sections. I don't think it's that anything like brand new, but because of color, because of lettering, it kind of looks impressive. But it's if I could have discovered this when I was a student, I would have remembered a lot more in classes. I'll tell you that. The piece de resistance is uh, my notes for Braiding Sweetgrass. This is a book about indigenous knowledge and how it interfaces with scientific knowledge in terms of learning from plants and nature. And being able to tune more into indigenous knowing is something that I wanted to prioritize prioritize because of their marginalization and because they just, there's so many things to learn. And this book was part of a book club that I was part of for the Feminist Book Club. What I did was read the book and I would, and every time I have a physical book, I use a pencil and I underline things that really stand out to me. I dog ear the pages, I letter in the margins. And then what I did was I went back through the book and looked at just my highlights. And those were the things that I incorporated into my sketch notes. Because this wasn't a live class, I was able to really look and sketch and Google some images so that I could represent them in a more accurate way in this notebook. You can see how I can start. I started off here. I just chose one color. There's a lot of visualization when it comes to the nature stuff. So that was easy to depict by, for example, this uh, line of evolved species. You can see there's plants that go to ants and then all the way to humans and then breaking it down into the different ways of how Western folks see that and how indigenous folks see that. If there's a word or a phrase that really stands out, I'll just letter that really big or I'll highlight it over here. There's so many references to different specific plants. So I just Googled some images about what a pecan branch looked like and was able to sketch that here. And you can see how it ended up kind of being two columns flow a little bit into each other, but I find like the easiest shape for me to draw. So, okay, strawberries. I know what a strawberry looks like, so I just sketch that here to add a little visual breakup of just text. Because you can see, I've taken a lot of just straight notes in here, but I've just organized it in a little bit of a different way. There are little images that come out of the stories that she was telling in her book, like pouring out coffee for gratitude for nature. So that was an easy one for me to identify and brings up the whole story in my mind. Being able to kind of show um, in simplest forms to me what stands for science. Beakers and bottles and liquid inside always signal some kind of science experiment to me. So that's how I drew that. And then drawing that relationship again with the two arrows to plants. And that is the science of nature. There is a whole chapter about asters and goldenrod, so I googled what those looked like and just did a really rough sketch here to break up the page for a story that really is a beautiful story. And throughout you can see I've added page numbers as to where those things come from so I can go back and read the full thing if I want to. You can see here I've you know just colored in big squares for just showing important numbers and saw, seeing that I had this big chunk of space, I found a quote that I really, really liked and filled in the rest of that space with that quote. You see that I'm trying to balance out when I use a brush pen and when I use a regular pen and when I use color. I don't want to just overwhelm one area with a bunch of lettering or just a bunch of coloring. So you can see, okay, here I've used a brush pen. So I'm going to change my font down here to make it much smaller, playing with size so that it shows that each idea is a separate idea. And then using the regular tip pen to write down much longer notes so that it balances out. Uh, something like this, everybody lives downstream. It, it was really obvious to me that that could be some kind of a flowing image. So this was an easy, way using the highlighter to show a stream that didn't require much drawing skill at all. It is really about choosing the shapes and the sketches that 
bring the idea to its simplest form or simplest relationship and illustrating what that looks like. I don't even think any of my sketches are really that good, but it's just communicating the ideas in a really clear way. The part that I was really proud of was the Thanksgiving address, and it was a miracle, honestly, that it all fit right down here, but um, I wrote a little bit of an introduction to what that was and broke it down to the different paragraphs that they were sharing of that address, changed the font here, and highlighted one line from each of those paragraphs. And again, nothing that's like super, super challenging, but that choosing like, okay, fish. I can draw a really rudimentary fish. Or plants. I can draw some leaves and, and branches. Some of them have color, some of them don't, right? It's that balance I was trying to strike. And just choosing one image that I could just sketch and break up the text. And somehow I lined it up so that it all kind of fit until the end and I could just finish with the one line. That felt like pure luck. <laughs> And then you can see here, this is kind of where I've gotten to. This was just too good of a quote. It connects to my day job and my work there and something that I truly believe in. So I made this a bigger chunk of the page using a thicker brush pen and highlighting words that are really important in this quote to me. And then I knew I needed to break that up with some sketching and work with the smaller tipped pen. Using images here, using images to break that up so it's not just text. Uh, using bigger space for the stories that really resonated with me, like growing a garden using the three sisters method, which is the squash, the beans, the corn, and drawing that out. And looking at this reminds me of the feeling that I had when I read the book and that story. Trying to Google some of the images of things like, you know, at black ash baskets and then sketching what that looked like. All of these images will elicit the whole rest of the story. And this is where I've gotten to so far. So I'm going to continue working my way through and building on more and more. I did not number all of the pages at the bottom. Once I hit that point, I will keep adding on the numbers. And when I am done with this, then I can add this information back up in the front into the index. So I have to decide. This could go honestly into like so many different categories. That's going to be the challenge of the focused index or dedicated index is I have to choose which category it goes into. And I'll just add braiding sweetgrass pages is such and such to such and such. And I'm going to keep building on this with all the other readings that I want to do. But doing sketch notes like this really helps me engage with the work. It takes me much longer, of course, to get through the content. But the point of it is for me to really deepen my connection to what it's talking about and be able to visualize it later. And I think when I go away from this, I think about the image that I drew. I remember my body drawing the letters and it helps me remember it a little bit more. So it's much more engaged. If that's something that you want to spend time doing, that is totally up to you. Uh, calligraphy is kind of hard to learn right away, but it builds over time. And so you can find other ways to, to play around with your letters and stylings and stuff like that. I'll probably do another video of thinking about different ways that you can change up your handwriting and styles. So stay tuned for that. But if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. I'm not used to answering questions about sketch notes and visualizing my note taking. So if you have them, I'd love to answer them and get some tips from you as to what you do to do this. If you like this video, I have a bunch of videos about calligraphy and using brush pens for that, so check those out at the end here. If you liked this, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, whatever, but I do hope that you enjoy it. I will see you in my next video. Bye!